I wish you a happy new year. But I'd like to offer uh, one tribute to you again. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, happy new year. There you go. There you go. I just wanted to, to offer uh, compliments again to the really outstanding, uh, inspired, and ambulance service we have in the community. Uh, they care about the people, and it's obvious, not just after the flood, but uh, this administration did all the time. Incidentally, in 1975, um, the Pennsylvania Medical Society did a survey, and there were 10,000 people a year dying unnecessarily or being unnecessarily crippled by the terrible ambulance service, emergency ambulance service in the state. And, and in Bridgeville, South and Collier, it was 29 people that was happening to 29 people a year. And being one of the major uh, uh, paramedic operated ambulance services in the county started here in Mount Edmund. And uh, uh, again, it's, so it, it's part of the system that serves the people in Bridgeville. Uh, excuse me, I, I want to, because every month for the last 24 months, Someone stood up here and complained about the traffic congestion in Bridgeville, and I just want to explain it a little bit for 30 seconds. Uh, the people in Bridgeville have been pay paying more taxes than they should be paying, primarily because our uh, major, our central business district collapsed 50 years ago, and the, the residents, uh, unfortunately, in situations like this all across the country end up paying more than they normally have to. And um, uh, there's a, I think the, uh, uh, I think the last time I was here, oh yeah, the last time I was here, I didn't get a chance to finish <coughs> explaining uh, on a road, the problem of, of the road network here. I mentioned to you that this rectangle is the Mount Edmund Upper St. Clair Township market area, and this rectangle is the South Bay Bridgeville uh, Collier market area. And I mentioned to you back then that after I-79 was built through uh, South Bay Bridgeville and Collier, and 40,000 consumer motorists a day started uh, evacuated, stopped driving through Mount Lebanon and Upper St. Clair, which was the basis of their becoming the marvelous communities that they are. At any rate, uh, a major network uh, program began on widening the roads leading to the Upper St. Clair and Mount Lebanon business districts. And uh, the interesting thing about that was there was no traffic congestion problem there because all 40% of those consumer motors were driving to South Bay, Bridgeville, and Collier on I-79. But that was a program that was done by the aggressive, uh, aggressiveness of the public officials in those townships. And I just want to show you one other thing that was related to that. This, again, this is the Mount Lebanon Upper St. Clair Business District. This is I-79, and this is the Bridgeville, South Bay, Collier Business District. You see those dotted lines? Those are areas where the economic development was enormous. A, a half a dozen shopping centers, uh, hundreds, maybe thousands of new businesses. But you'll notice in the area right parallel to the Mount Lebanon Upper St. Clair Business District, which was South Head Bridgeville Collier, they're, they're that similar economic development didn't occur because the traffic <coughs> problem was never resolved here. And it's not only your fault. We're talking about PennDOT and the county. And just, just to give you some of the examples of how sophisticated that plan was, excuse me, this is Barbara Road that was widened before lanes. If you'll notice, the road was not extended uh, to the Dormont business district. It ended at the uh, I forget the name of the road. Yeah, the road. And you'll also, Bowery Road, the four lane widening was not extended to the Bridgeville Central Business District. It, was, it ended there. These, it, this is a carefully, rather brilliant, laid out plan. But anyway, uh, I think uh, the flooding that I'll, I'm going to walk back there and refer to in a moment. If, uh, if you guys come up with the right plan, that to solve the flooding problem, 
the flooding problem could be expanded in the eyes of federal, state, and county funding officials to not only solve the flooding for Bridgeville, but solve the, uh, a significant part of the traffic congestion there, and also the um, uh, create a redevelopment, economic redevelopment for the entire community, which has been referred to here tonight by a couple people already. I want to show you this. There were four since uh, there were four uh, studies of how to solve the recent flooding problem done. Uh, uh, one was from the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection. The other was was the one that I did two years ago, and the third one was the one that was just finished a couple of months ago by the University of Pittsburgh School of Engineering. <coughs> However, the fourth. Uh, all, by the way, all three of those studies were the same. They all uh, suggest <coughs> the deepening and widening the brick beds of the block and run, and, and two of them suggest putting a wall <coughs> between the creek bed and uh, uh, bubbles. Anyway, <coughs> what I wanted to show you is uh, this is the one from the this is, uh, I'm not going to read this stuff, but this is the one from the uh, uh, Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection. They essentially said <coughs> McLaughlin Run flooding is due to, to an undersized cha chapel. It's a result of the uh, economic and uh, residential and commercial development north of Bridgeville and upper St. Clair and uh, um, <coughs> Bethel Park. And, uh, and, and nothing is going to change. And it will get worse unless uh, something is done about it, obviously. And this, was in, this study was done in 1980. Uh, this, this study, which you can't see, this is the one that I did by taking a bunch of the measurements after one of the major floods. I think it was in 2017. <clears throat> At any rate, uh, my study suggested it's just the same thing, widening and deepening the creek and uh, putting a wall between it and between the creek. And uh, mine has some roadway, major roadway uh, changes of uh, making Bowerhill Road uh, two lanes one way heading west for Washington Avenue and two lanes one way coming back uh, on Baldwin Street. <clears throat> and this is the University of Pittsburgh study. Uh, they essentially say increase the creek bed depth and width. <coughs> Excuse me. They uh, they measured the uh, cubic feet of uh, water per second. They have the railroad bridge there, which we're all familiar with. It's 4,200 feet. <coughs> the uh, uh, bridge over Barker Road is uh, cited 3,250 CFS, and the uh, the culvert. Is specified uh, to be only 1860, and it's actually less than less because it was a minor measurement. If you guys get a chance there, you can go back and look at this. This area here is a seven and a half mile watershed area that floods Bridgeville. Bridgeville is three quarters of a mile square, and you have all of this watershed area in Bethel Park and up over St. Clair rushing into our community. This has been going on for years. The pink area, that's the Baldwin Street area and the uh, uh, it's uh, the Carroll Street area that likewise floods. But I just want to, I just want to read you a comment. Wow. Yeah. What's the point? My point is the University of Pittsburgh study cites the flaws in the plan that has been recommended to you by the Virginia right. Planning Commission and you're considering. It states that the plan won't work. It's twice as costly as any of the other plans I've shown you. And, uh, and, and by the way, if none of you have ever seen a... Yeah. Uh, we haven't, again, just like last month, month before. You haven't enjoyed I know that. Gotcha. I'm not sure you're aware. We had students that did that study too, correct? Yeah, so what? Because the, cost, the cost of that study is probably worth a quarter of a million dollars to get an engineering firm. A quarter of a million dollars? That's right. Okay. I think the council member was just asking you, as he has in the past, and all of them to accurately reflect that that's a student, and there wasn't a comment on its quality or quantity, but it actually students. Well, I thought that class, was the That was a class, but that's what I was I thought that, that, was I, that was a student's submission of actually an assignment 
in a course that they did in and it's taken and away. I quote unquote the University of Pittsburgh. As a matter of fact, it's on television. You can check it, you can see it in its entirety. The presentation was an hour long in front of about 150 other engineering students at the University of Pittsburgh. Uh, I, I think it was a couple of months ago. But well, nobody's this kind of study. Original, pardon me? Nobody's this kind of study. Oh, well, that, I'm glad to hear that. At any rate, I just want you to see this is the proposal that was. This is the proposal that was proposed to you by the Visual Planning Commission. It shows the Bower Hill Road being removed from the cement company to the McLaughlin Road intersection so that the creek can be made in a certain kind of fashion. And the area from where Bower Hill Road used to be, or once is now, and Baldwin Streets to be turned into a conservative tree line plain thing. And, the, and all, all of the buildings on that plane are to be removed. <coughs> Excuse me. The entire area is being proposed to be a floodplain, and all the buildings on the opposite side of Baldwin Street are going to be placed on 10 foot high steel columns, uh, which. And again, Bob, we have not adopted. You're just yeah. repeating stuff. No, that, no, that's fine. I'm just repeating it to make sure it's in the public record. It is. It was in the public <laughs> record last month. That's in the month before. But anyway, I just want to let me show you one of the six other ones. Let's, let's back to the roads.
That extension has been recommended to you guys by seven different professional traffic engineers. When you say us, you mean Bridgewell Council? Bridge 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 members of Bridgewell Council over 40 years. 40 years ago, right? Okay, I just want to make a point. Well, 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 so it wasn't re recommended to this council. I'm not, I'm, no, 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 I don't think okay, that's what I mean. It might have been recommended to a couple of older members who were on the council now. But they, but the point was. You've been here like two years. He knows Bruce has been on the council for like I know I'm not very well. I know all the engineers' names. And at any rate, I'll also give you all the engineers' names. There's seven of them, by the way, including in 1969 the Allegheny County Chargers Valley Panhandle Commission. At any rate, that's not the point. The point I want to say is this. The, this road system being made part of the whatever solution you come up with for the uh, solving of the flood problem would, would be great great importance because that 220 yard extension there would allow the bill to make uh, uh, Shady Avenue parallel to Washington Avenue both roads would be three lanes wide for two city blocks and it would solve about 60 percent of your traffic problem okay. at any rate I just wanted to be the and all this information digested and uh, don't let the opportunity slip by. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.